Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express. In this lesson, we'll continue what we started in the previous two lessons. So in the first one, we introduced the concept of the storage and especially block storage. And in the previous lesson, we explained object storage. And then we mentioned that for object storage or for S3, we have something called S3 storage classes. So let's explore in this lesson what exactly are the S3 storage classes. So for my S3, I have multiple options of storage and this is what we call storage classes or if you come from a storage background, that's what we used to call storage tiering. So what do we have here? Let's start with the first tier or with the first class and that's what we call S3 standard. An S3 standard, you can think about it as this is the kind of class or the tier where I store my frequently accessed data. This is usually the fastest type of storage and here this is where I store the data where these data will get access frequently. And then something very interesting about S3 in general, if you remember when we talked about the durability, we mentioned that 11 nines of durability. So how S3 is really doing this 11 nines of very high level of durability, very simply S3 out of the box, whenever you upload any object, this object is automatically stored in a minimum of three availability zones. That's by default. If you upload an object and you specify this is stored in S3 standard, then automatically AWS will take it, will replicate this object among three availability zones. And that's the first storage class. The second storage class, and you can even get it from the name, it's what we call standard infrequently accessed. So what exactly is this type of storage? So here in this one and from the name, this is for infrequently accessed. So that's another type of class. And this one is a bit more cost effective less expensive than the S3 standard and this is where I will store the data that are accessed less frequently. But please pay attention in something. Why? Because here every time you need to retrieve an object and this object is stored in the standard IA, you will have to pay an extra retrieval fees. So in general you put the objects that are frequently accessed, you put it in S3 standard and then for the kind of objects that by the time that they are not as frequently accessed, very simply you can move them in standard IA. And then the third type is a very critical type to use and this is what we call S3 one zone infrequently accessed and here you can understand one zone means what? One zone means data is in a single availability zone. And here you need to understand that this is definitely a lower type of storage, but please pay attention when you are paying, when you are using this one. Simply why? Because my data is stored in a single availability zone. If this availability zone fails, I might lose my data. And that's why it's important to understand the use case of the one zone IA. I can use the one zone IA for the kind of data that I can regenerate. Like for example, if I have something like sales reports or sales generated reports, if I lost them, I can regenerate it. This is one option. Or this is for pictures thumbnails. So if I lost it, very simply I can regenerate the thumbnails from the original pictures. And that's why here this special storage class must be very carefully used. And then you might think about it like this. Now, if I'm dealing with a very small number of objects, I can manually move objects between storage classes. But if I have a website like a social media website, I have thousands of users and I upload millions 
of pictures and videos. Do I keep track about these objects manually? Of course not, usually on the cloud, we don't do anything manual. And that's why we have this fourth type of storage class where we call it intelligent tiering. So what exactly is intelligent tiering doing? Intelligent tiering, this is automatically tracking the usage of the objects. And if there is an object that is being accessed frequently, it moves the object to S3 standard. And by the time, if this object is not becoming frequently accessed, this intelligent tiering has a machine learning algorithm in the back end that is tracking the usage. And if this object is not retrieved frequently, intelligent tiering will take this object and will move it to a more cost effective storage class like for example S3 standard IE. And what you need to know that if you are using intelligent tiering, that intelligent tiering will charge a small monthly monitoring fee per object because I monitor all the objects and then I can change the storage class to even make it more and more cost effective. Next, we are going to explain the S3 Glacier. And S3 Glacier is very important for a specific use case and this is the use case of archiving. Let's see the explanation. S3 is also designed for archival and this is using S3 Glacier or S3 Glacier Deep Archive and this is where you have the kind of data where you would like to always keep a copy maybe for compliance reasons for example in case after many years you might need to go and get this copy of data so also S3 offers a very cost effective archival service using Glacier or Glacier Deep Archive. So let's see the three storage classes of S3 Glacier as we explained this is related to archiving and here the first one and that's a new storage class by the way and this is what we call Glacier Instant Retrieval which means this is for the kind of data that usually I would like to archive but at any certain point of time if I need this data I need to access this data immediately and that's the first storage class. So this is usually the lowest cost storage for long-lived archived data as we call it. So usually it's very rarely accessed but if I want to access this data retrieval time as you can see is in milliseconds. Now the second type or the second storage class is what we call Glacier flexible retrieval and as you can see from here the difference will be it's similar that I have here a lower cost object storage for archival but then you're going to see here the retrieval time is not in milliseconds here the retrieval time can differ and you can have it from minutes till even hours till I retrieve my object and the last one and this is what we call glacier deep archive this is as we call it the lowest cost object storage that you can have for archival but please pay attention because if you want to retrieve your object, object retrieval can take up to 12 hours if not even more. So with this we come to the end of this very interesting lesson where we explain the S3 storage classes. So it's very important to understand the different types of classes and how even I can move my data automatically between these classes where we explain something like intelligent tiering. And how do I do archiving? And this is where we explain something like S3 Glacier. I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next lesson.